Last week went surprisingly well for the Democrats. Well, what about this weekend? To give you an idea of some of the political developments, take a look at this bleat from Donald Trump that says, just another giant election scam, wake up America. So not well for the Republicans, <laughs> it's looking like. Uh, Donald Trump was actually seen at his daughter's wedding rehearsal, looking in the words of the New York Post, grumpy. Now that might be because of the political developments, or it might just be that celebrating another human, even a member of his family is an inconvenience for him. But more likely it's probably because of the call that happened during the wedding that uh, Cortez Masto, Senator in Nevada is keeping her seat. And that is great news because that means that with that call and the call earlier of uh, Blake Masters being defeated by Mark Kelly, no matter what happens in the runoff that's gonna come in Georgia, the Democrats have maintained control of the Senate. And uh, really fast, um, we showed you that screenshot. If you could bring it up again, I think this was like Axios or something like that of Masto winning. Uh, we, we chose that because that's like a, a, a nice reputable source or whatever. But to give you an idea of my life, the way that I found out about this over the weekend was this tweet from Francesca Fiorentini in all caps saying, ah, <laughs> suck my left one GOP. Cortez Masto wins Nevada, run and hide, bitch. So. That's how I get my news, and and I only mention this because first of all, I love and miss Francesca, but also, like that's what I'm gonna miss about Twitter that you can learn about the fate of the Senate from a tweet like that, and it's it's soon not gonna be there anymore. But um, but anyway, uh, she won, Mark Kelly won, and that means that right now it is 50-49, potentially could be 51-49, which would be a great way to cancel out one of the worst Democrats votes. So I wanna stop here for a second, Dan, because we we know that it's still likely the Republicans are gonna take the House. That's important, that's unfortunate. But having the Senate is really important, You know, not only for you know, like potentially Biden being like, like convicted in the Senate or whatever, that's probably not gonna happen. Um, but being able to, for instance, get Supreme Court justices and confirm other judges, of which there are dozens of vacancies already, this is super significant. What do you think? This is exciting. If not that it takes away the leverage that any one senator, usually it was Joe Manchin, could have over the entire legislative process. And while there will be much less of a legislative process to have, now that, as you said, John, it's likely that the Republicans will take the House. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, even months ago, otherwise than, <clears throat> otherwise, despite the uh, news of Roe v. Wade being struck down, this was assumed to be another good red year for Republicans. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's being looked at like, listen, there's still some people who are saying there is a you know non insignificant chance that Democrats hold the House, you know, just as non insignificant as it was that Democrats retained the Senate, which had actually ended up happening. So I don't fully subscribe to that yet because just the statistics aren't there. But I am at least at the time of recording right now, we the Republicans haven't hit 218 also. But I think the fact that a supposed red wave that not just the status quo thought of for the past year, but Republicans thought of up until like minutes before going live on election night <laughs> is good because it's beating the morale out of them. It's good because it's sending, you know, you're getting one of those moments where the Donald Trump wing of the party and the F Donald Trump wing of the party are starting to actually spin and collide together. There's yeah. actually concern about tomorrow if and when Donald Trump makes his official announcement to run for president, if that'll once again make sure he has the magic touch and loses Georgia for the Republican <laughs> Party again. Like that would be phenomenal for me. My, my philosophy, as you know, is let them fight on MP4. But I really want, <laughs> I, I think we should revel in the good news. But also keep in mind that, and my last point on here is that the Democratic Party is going to, as they often do, say this is a response. This is how good we are doing as we are doing our job. Let's keep doing our status quo job. And I think what AOC is saying is, no, let's remember that this is once again the victory that was carried by progressives and shows that progressive politics are very popular and they should be yeah. fought for and advocated for it every step of the way. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and we should also bear in mind, like 
This is important for multiple levels of reasons. So one, it's another indication that the midterms didn't go the Republicans way. So everything that they were campaigning on that they seem to think is what politics should be about, demonizing trans people, taking away rights, all that, didn't succeed for them. Pushing the big lie turns out might get some people to watch your stupid channel or whatever, but it's probably not gonna get senators elected. So that's good, that's the very immediate reason. The secondary reason is for the next couple of years, it means that there some things will able to be able to be done by Joe Biden, especially when it comes to the courts, which are incredibly important. But also it's important beyond that because everything depends on everything that came before. We have to be, when it comes to politics, like Littlefinger and fight every battle everywhere at all times. What's gonna come out of 2024 is going to depend on this. It could end up being a really bad year for the Democrats in the Senate, in which case having maintained the seats that they have right now mitigates the damage that can be done in 2024. Or if it's a good year for the Democrats, then it's all the more important that we got these wins now because then maybe we can really blow past all of the worst excesses of the worst neo-libs in the Senate. So all of this incredibly important. And and even if the, the, the Republicans do take the House, which it looks like they probably will, it's gonna be a much more narrow margin than it looked like it would have been, which means retaking it significantly easier next time around. And so all of these are important and it's also important that we draw the right lessons coming out of this.